Well, it's the time of year to get out in the yard, but yes, um, I'm a little sore, but that's all good because here we're with Tara Freeman. She's our horticulturalist uh, from UF IFAS in St. John's County. And, and Tara, we're talking about, uh, you know, I'm having fun getting out in the yard, but I've noticed you got to know which plant to plant, the right plant to plant, what we call native plants in this area. It's so important due to our harsh sun angle this time of year. So can you tell us what a native plant is? Sure. So native plants are ones that have evolved naturally in a particular region or ecosystem over hundreds or thousands of years. So only plants that are found before European settlement are considered to be native to the United States. And because Florida has such diverse ecosystems, what's native to South Florida may or may not be native to North Florida and vice versa. So we really just look to the local area to, to decide what's native here. Interesting. So, and this goes back before St. Augustine was founded. So it goes all the way back to before the settlement, right? The colonial settlement. Yes. Interesting. I didn't know it went that far back. Okay. Um, also, okay. So what is the benefit? This is the key, the benefit of growing and planting native plants. Okay. So there are so many benefits to growing native plants. Um, one of them is that because the native plants and the native wildlife, they co-evolve together, they have a mutually beneficial relationship. So for example, certain flowers need the hummingbirds to pollinate them, just as the hummingbirds need that the flower's nectar for sustenance. Uh, native pollinators such as hummingbirds, uh, bees, moths, uh, bats, they have very specific relationships with native plants, so they require certain species to survive. Um, the most well-known relationship is with the monarch caterpillar and the milkweeds. So while the, while the adult butterflies, while the adult monarch butterflies can nectar on many plants, the caterpillars feed only on the milkweeds. So it's really necessary for monarch survival. Right, and the monarchs, if we know at home, those are the beautiful butterflies, right? We got to take care of the monarch butterflies. Absolutely. And you said the hummingbirds as well? Okay. Now my wife sees hummingbirds from time to time. We don't see too many hummingbirds. I need to get some more native plants in, right? So how do I know where to plant those native plants, Tara? Okay, so uh, with native plants, it's just as important to follow the principles of, of right plant, right place. So um, select plants that naturally grow in similar conditions as your landscape. For example, if you live near the beach, you're going to want salt tolerant plants. So just look to what's naturally growing on the beach dunes to see what would do well in your yard. For example, uh, Gallardia, which is blanket flower, or dune daisies, they tend to grow on the dunes. So they'll do well in a, in a, a salty, um, sandy, super sunny front yard. And another example would be if you have a low-lying wet area in your landscape, because a lot of people have these and they, they try to grow turf and grass and it's not very successful. So instead of trying to grow something that doesn't really thrive there, um, look to a wetland area to see what would what would naturally thrive in those conditions. So one beautiful plant is called blue flag iris. It's a native iris and it will do well in those on and off um, wet, dry kind of little little indents in your yard. Very interesting. Yeah, so know, know where you're living, know your zone. So there's big differences between plant zones. We hear about uh, hurricane zones, right? Know your zone, well, know your zone with plants as well. So there's a big difference between the beaches, like you said, uh, areas like St. John's, Mandarin, and then you cross the river to the west side and then up in Southeast Georgia. So all that's very important, right? Absolutely. So in St. John's County, we're zone 9A and just look to, to what's native in our, in our general area. Okay, very good. And also, so we talked about these native plants. Um, can you give some examples? Because I'm ready to plant some. Absolutely. There are so many wonderful native plants to highlight. One of my favorite is called passion flower. It's Passiflora incarnata. It's a vine. You often see it growing um, along, cascading along the trees in the spring and summer. But it has huge purple fringed flowers and these greenish yellow edible fruits once it's done flowering. Um, it's also a larval host plant for the zebra longwing, the gulf fritillary, and the julia butterflies, and it's pollinated by bees. So it's, it's a wonderful, useful plant. How about uh, something in yellow? Okay, um, so actually Florida's state wildflower is Coreopsis, okay. and that's yellow. It's, it's a wonderful butterfly attracting plant. 
uh, you'll you'll actually see that growing along the roadsides often in the you know the roadside planting wildflower mixes. Interesting, Coreopsis. Okay, uh, so we get the yellows, some purples, maybe a little pink. How about we add a little pink, a little more color? Okay, so uh, another one of my favorites. It's called Scarlet Sage. This is this comes in red, pink, or white. So whatever your favorite color is, you can pretty much fit it into your garden. But it's a native perennial with really long lasting blooms almost year-round a great nectar source for hummingbirds and butterflies and it thrives in full sun to partial shade and it's even moderately salt tolerant well just some great information and of course if you have any more questions where can we go Tara um, you can always contact your local horticulture extension agent every county has one so I'm your St. John's County horticulture yeah. agent but if you live in a different county um, I'm happy to direct you to that person if you don't know who it is Awesome. Thank you so much. And yes, that green thumb, it's looking a little greener thanks to you. You're always a great resource and hope to have you back soon, Tara Freeman. So thank you. And of course, for another look, another good look and at all these great plants and the native plants, head to firstcoastliving.net later today.